we've got nine different options ETFs. Now, I wanna first off make sure we're all on the same page with what these types of investments are because they can be kind of confusing to the average Joe out there. So let's dispel that issue right now. So we've got options ETFs here, meaning that it's a portfolio of investments and what they do to increase the amount of income, they utilize options. The types of options used here would be covered calls or potentially protective puts or both. Now you can actually use this strategy yourself in your own portfolio. It just takes a little bit more work to do it for individual stocks, but you can totally do it. When you are writing an option as opposed to buying one, most people talk about buying options, but when you write an option, you are selling it to a buyer. And that means if you're selling it, you're getting income from that. Now there might be certain obligations down the road that you have to adhere to, but the point is you're actually generating income as a result of the transaction. So what I wanna do first is explain to you each of the different nine ETFs we're gonna look at how they work, how they're a little bit unique from the others, and then what we'll do is we'll test them. The truth is most of these are not very old, so there's not a lot of data to go off of, and there's certainly not a specific um, growth rate for the dividend. So what I did was we've got two different scenarios we're gonna look at. We're gonna look at performance, both annual dividend income and the portfolio value for two different time periods. We have three different options ETFs that have a history from January of 2014 through March of 2021. So we're gonna look at those three from that time frame. Then we're gonna look at all of them except for two for the time period January of 2020 through March of 2021. The first one we're gonna look at here is probably the one that's most well known and that is the Global X NASDAQ 100 Covered Call ETF. So as it says here in the summary page, the Global X NASDAQ 100 Covered Call ETF, QYLD, follows a covered call or buy right strategy in which the fund buys the stocks in the NASDAQ 100 index and writes or sells corresponding call options on the same index. So the NASDAQ index is made up of the top 100 stocks based on their market capitalization in that specific index. So when we think about the holdings here, let's actually look at the individual holdings so you can understand the types of underlying assets here. You obviously can recognize these names here. We've got Apple, makes up 11% of the assets, Microsoft, Amazon, Tesla, Alphabet, Class C, Facebook, Alphabet, Class A, Nvidia, PayPal, and Comcast are the top 10 holdings. Here. So what the fund does is they buy the assets in the index, okay? So they buy all the 100 different stocks, market capitalization weighted, obviously Apple, Microsoft, Amazon getting the biggest weighting in the index. And then as you can see here, what they do is they sell a covered call. As it says here, QYLD's covered call position is created by buying or owning the stocks in the NASDAQ 100 index and selling a monthly at the money index call option. Now, when they say at the money, it means right at the price that they're selling at the beginning of the month. So let's say hypothetically the price is $50 per share on January 1st. Then they're gonna sell an option right at $50 per share, as opposed to selling an out of the money, say at like $55 or $60, which would generate less income. So as it says here, an option is a contract sold by one party to another that gives the buyer the right, but not the obligation to buy or sell a stock at an agreed upon price, which we call the strike price, within a certain period or on a specific date. In return for the sale of that option, the buyer has to then pay a premium, kind of like an insurance company. If you buy an insurance policy, you have the, the opportunity potentially in the future to have a specific event covered. In exchange for that right, you pay a premium to the insurance company. This operates in the exact same fashion. As it says here, in return for the sale of the call option, the fund receives a premium, which can potentially produce income. Here's the exact process they follow. They buy all of the stocks in the NASDAQ 100, then they sell NASDAQ 100 index options, NDX, to a counterparty that will expire in one month. And a premium is received as a result. Any income that is received by QYLD during those 30 days is then distributed to the investors. And then they do this every single month, as you can see by the graph right here. So you can see how this might generate a lot of income for investors. Now, the downside to utilizing a covered call option is anytime there's a covered call, it, it limits how much growth you can have in the underlying investment. If the NASDAQ goes up by a lot, you don't get to participate in all that growth growth if you're owning this specific ETF because it'd be capped at whatever that strike price is and anything above and beyond that, that growth will go to somebody else. In a down market, when the NASDAQ is going down, then the premiums you're receiving from the options being sold offset some of the losses you're incurring when the market's going down. So QYLD pays a monthly distribution here and that's how this fund works. It tracks the underlying NASDAQ index, the top 100 assets or stocks in the index, and then it also sells covered calls. 
Let's talk about the next option here. The next fund we're gonna talk about does the exact same thing, but not with NASDAQ, it does it with the S&P 500. We've got XYLD, or the Global X S&P 500 Covered Call ETF. Exact same strategy, but with a different underlying index. Instead, they buy the 500 stocks in the S&P 500 and sell covered calls against the index. Now, you'll notice that a lot of the holdings are similar. Top holdings, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, Google, Google, Tus Tusla. Tesla, Berkshire Hathaway, JP Morgan Chase, Johnson & Johnson, but it is actually 500 holdings as opposed to just 100. Exact same strategy here, so I'm not gonna go into any more detail. Let's move on to the next ETF. This one is interesting here. This is from the same investment company, Global X, but it's the Global X Russell 2000 Covered Call ETF, R-Y-L-D. Same strategy, but not quite exact same um, execution on the strategy. As it says here, it follows a covered call or buy right strategy in which the fund buys exposure to the stocks in the Russell 2000 index and writes or sells corresponding call options. Notice the slightly different language here. It doesn't say it owns the stocks in the Russell 2000. It says it buys exposure, exposure to the stocks in the Russell 2000. We can see here that for RYLD, the total holdings are three. <laughs> it's a big difference, 104 here for NASDAQ, 496 for the S&P 500, but only three for the Russell 2000. And that's because they don't actually own all 2000 stocks in the Russell 2000. They own exposure to the Russell 2000. What they do is they actually own an ETF. So it's an ETF that owns another ETF. It owns exposure to the Russell 2000, through the Vanguard Russell 2000 ETF. Ticker symbol here is VTWO. There's some money in cash, and then there are the options that they buy. Now, one thing I forgot to mention for the other two, but for RYLD, we've got a distribution yield of 10, excuse me, 11.62% for this fund, RYLD. It's got a monthly payout here. QYLD has a dividend yield of 11.58%. XYLD has a yield of 8.46%. So these first three ETFs have the exact same strategy. Now the expense ratios here for the first three, NASDAQ had an expense ratio of 0.67%, the S&P 500, XYLD had 0.71%, and then for the Russell 2000, 0.56%. Now these first three were definitely some of the most popular options out there, ones with the most assets under management, but I wanted to also include some that were actually mentioned in the comments from other um, members of the audience. So thank you, your actual comments are reasons why these ETFs are included here. So the first one that I got a number of comments on, hey, would you invest in this one? Hey, would you invest in this one? Is the Nationwide Risk Managed Income ETF, N-U-S-I. This one is a little bit unique here. So I wanna talk about it. As it says here, the description, an income solution that targets high current income and seeks to provide investors with a measure of downside protection in falling markets and potential for upside participation in rising markets. What does this mean? It's, almost, it's what they call a collared option, meaning they've got options on both sides of the aisle. So you've got covered calls and as it says here, protective puts. So the way this works is you own the underlying index. And so you might be thinking, well, what is the index that we're owning here for NUSI? Let's take a look. So NUSI, as it says right here, it tracks the NASDAQ 100 index, kind of like that first option, QYLD. So it's got 104 different holdings in NUSI. The assets held in here are the NASDAQ 100. The covered calls generate income in the form of premium being received for those options that are being sold at or above the money, okay, that strike price. And then the protective put comes in by buying, not selling an option, buying an option below the current price. You've got the underlying assets, which might have cap capital appreciation. You've got some income being generated by selling call options, and then you're purchasing protective puts in the, in the event that the prices go down on the stock. So the goal is to capture kind of that middle section here. You've got protective puts on the downside, you've got covered calls on the upside, so you can't gain a ton from this option, but you can generate recurring income. NUSI has an expense ratio of 0.68% and we will see how this all works out here. NUSI was created in December of 19, so we don't have a ton of data here. It's only gonna be able to participate in this performance from January of 2020 through March of 2021. But it's got a current dividend yield of 7.73%. Okay, so the next two are very unique options. They're very new, so we couldn't participate in either one of these scenarios because they're so brand new. They were created in late 2020. So the issue with, with the first QYLD and XYLD, the one that tracked the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500 is, you have these underlying assets that are owned by the fund and they're selling options on 100% of the assets, meaning that 
potentially you ha you might generate income from the portfolio, but you might potentially, if the market rises significantly in that time frame, you might have an issue where you have to sell some of your underlying assets because most of your income is coming from the option premium as opposed to the capital appreciation. So what these funds do, QYLG and XYLG, is that they have a covered call, they're called the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500 covered call and growth. ETF, meaning that you have the same underlying assets, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ, but instead of selling options against 100% of the portfolio, instead, as it says right here, they're only selling call options against half of the portfolio. That way, you're able to participate more in some of that upside growth if the markets are rising. So this one gives you a little bit more of a balanced approach to the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 where you've got balance between the capital appreciation as well as the option premium coming in. Next up on our list here is KNG, and this is the an ETF that writes options against the S&P 500 dividend aristocrats, which is an interesting strategy because we talk a lot about how dividend aristocrats are such a great uh, investment option, uh, but I don't know if I would necessarily sell options against them, but we're gonna go ahead and take a look and see what KNG does here. So we've got the S&P 500 dividend aristocrats target income ETF, KNG. It's unique here because it tracks all of the dividend aristocrats, which there are 66. Um, it's a relatively new fund. It's for the most part equally weighted here. So the 66 holdings here, Exxon, People's United, uh, Federal Realty, Chevron, Cincinnati Financial, Caterpillar, all the different dividend aristocrats equally weighted. So as it says here, the index is a rules-based buy-ride strategy designed with the primary goal of generating an annualized level of income from stock dividends and options premiums that is approximately 3% over the annual dividend yield of the S&P 500 index and a secondary goal of generating price returns that are proportional to the S&P 500. So, as it says here, the index is composed of two parts, an equal weighted portfolio of the stocks contained in that dividend aristocrats index and a rolling series of short call options on each of the aristocrat stocks. So interestingly enough here, it's call options against each of the individual dividend stocks that are dividend aristocrats. So 66 different call options every single month, short term call options. And just as a quick reminder for everyone here on the channel, the dividend aristocrats are companies that are part of the S&P 500 that have been raising their dividend and paying it out every single year for at least 25 years. Next up we have Devo, D-I-V-O, which is the Amplify CWP Enhanced Dividend Income ETF. So this one is an interesting strategy because Devo doesn't have any significant holdings. It's got, it says here, the security selection, so it's managed with a strong emphasis on owning high quality large cap companies with historical dividend and earnings growth. It's balanced among the traditional 10 S&P sectors. It consists of 20 to 25 stocks which are screened and adjusted according to attributes including market cap, management track record, earnings, cash flow, and return on equity, and including tactical covered call writing. Covered call options are written on individual stocks on a tactical basis. So they don't just automatically sell in covered calls on each one of the stocks, they do it tactically. So at times they do and at times they don't. Currently this fund has the top 10 holdings which are United Health Group, Apple, Caterpillar, Goldman Sachs, Visa, Union Pacific, Microsoft, Nike, McDonald's, and Chevron here, almost equally weighted amongst these top 10 holdings. Additionally, Devo has an expense ratio of 0.49%. It's got, current, like I said, currently 22 holdings. It was created in December of 2016, and it's got a current distribution yield of 4.49%. I skipped over a few here. So we've got QYLG and XYLG, which have um, a dividend yield of 6.05% and 5.3%, and the S&P 500 Dividend Aristocrats ETF here has a dividend yield of 3.43%. And then lastly, we have FTHI, the First Trust Buy Right Income ETF. So the fund, as it says here, the fund's primary investment objective is to provide current income. The fund's secondary investment is to provide capital appreciation. The fund will pursue its objectives by investing in equity securities listed on the US exchange of all market caps and by utilizing an option strategy consisting of writing or selling US exchange traded covered call options on the S&P 500. So FTHI holds 123 different dividend stocks in the portfolio. Top 10 holdings represent um, represented by Apple, Microsoft, Cardinal Health, Aero Electronics, MGM Resorts, Lumen Technologies, Campbell Soup, Bank of New York Mellon Corporation, Vertive Holdings, and Amazon. So very interesting mix of different stocks there. It says here, percentage of portfolio with call options at any one time, or currently as of February 26, only 69%. Currently, FTHI has 273 different holdings here. You can see the weighting here with Apple, Microsoft, and Cardinal Health making up the top options here. And you can see there's some cash, right? 
1.5 billion in cash because you gotta have cash set aside in the event that you have to exercise some of the options. And then all the way here at the bottom, you've got the actual options that have been sold against the underlying assets. Okay, so you can see here, we've got nine different options and we've got SPY in here, the S&P 500 ETF and the top performing dividend ETF, SCHD, the Schwab US Dividend Equity ETF. So a mix of different options here, a mix of different strategies involved here. Let's see how these actually perform. We've got two different time periods. Again, the only ETFs that had a significant enough history to go back to January of 2014 through March of 2021 were the top two, QYLD and XYLD, tracking the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500, and then we also had FTHI for that period. And then we're gonna compare that against SPY and SCHD for the same time frame. And then all of them except for two were able to do the performance from January of 2020 through March of 2021. We're gonna look at the actual price history, the actual dividend or distributions being paid out and see how they actually perform compared to each other and see which one would be the best option or if any of them would be a good option to own in your own portfolio. Let's start by taking a look at this time frame here that we only had three options for from January of 2014 through March of 2021. Again, we're looking at the actual histories here. We've got Global X NASDAQ 100, all the history. We're assuming $400 a month being invested. I forgot to mention that. $400 a month into each of these different securities to see which one would perform better. And then we're, of course, reinvesting all dividends during this process. Same thing for XYLD. We've got the same options here. And then we've got FTHI right here. Now, when we're talking about portfolio value and annual dividend income during the time frame. So when I say the annual dividend income, what I'm talking about here is in that last year, ending in March of 2021, the previous 12 months, what was the annual dividend income for that rolling 12 months? And then the portfolio value is very straightforward. It's the portfolio value based on all the reinvested dividends and the capital appreciation during that time frame. Without further delay, let's go ahead and take a look here. All right, annual dividend income. We can see here only $1,830 for First Trust. And then for XYLD, it had income of $36.77. And then the NASDAQ 100 was the outperformer here from that perspective. Annual dividend income, $6,101.90 in that last 12 month period. And then portfolio value also QYLD wins here as well with a portfolio value of $53,352.53 versus $49,000 for the S&P 500 and $46,000 for First Trust. So of these options here, based on that time frame, it looks like QYLD would be the winner. However, let's compare it to the S&P 500 and the Schwab ETF. We've got S&P 500 has $65,000 an annual dividend income, which is lower, $873. But look at the, the difference in the portfolio value. 65,000 for the S&P 500 and 67,000 for the Schwab US Dividend Equity ETF. So if the goal is to generate cash flow, then it's pretty clear that you would want to work with the NASDAQ 100 covered call. However, if your goal was to generate capital appreciation, Sounds like you definitely wanna go with Schwab's Dividend Equity ETF. Okay, let's look at the second scenario here. Just working with a small bit of data here, because all we had available to us was January 2020 through March of 2021. We'll look at the annual dividend income and we'll look at the portfolio value here. So let's start with the annual dividend income and we'll also include right out of the gate here, SPY and SCHD. In those 12 months, we've got here, Top results, the uh, Russell 2000 covered call was the winner here, $398 in annual dividend income. Second place goes to QYLD at $389.67. And then third place goes to the S&P 500 XYLD. S&P 500 obviously lagging way down here and Schwab only had $107. So not very significant from a cash flow perspective. Here we go, top performers here actually was this one almost won here. The Russell 2000 almost won here at $7,422, but the top performer here was actually the Schwab US Dividend Equity ETF at 7830. But you'll notice here that uh, SPY did not have more capital than the uh, Russell 2000 covered call here at $7,200. Then we had some other ones that were pretty close. We got right here, the uh, Devo Amplify Enhanced Dividend Income at 7,107 and then the S&P 500 Dividend Aristocrats um, covered call option here was 7181. So interesting results here, guys. I mean, I, honestly, I've never really looked too hard at these options uh, just because they have ex higher expense ratios. But at the same time, if the goal is cash flow, and that's a key factor here because over a longer time frame of 20 or 30 years, the difference in capital appreciation might be very significant. So if the goal is to generate cash flow, then these might be a great option to build into your portfolio, especially if you're already not owning a dividend ETF. Like for me, 
I own quality dividend stocks. I might really strongly consider owning one of the Global X option ETFs here as a complement in there to build an extra option premium and participate in some of the upside growth with stocks that are not in my portfolio, such as Amazon, Apple, and Google. However, if you already own a dividend ETF, it might not be that much benefit to you unless you know that the underlying assets in Schwab are different than the ones in QYLD. Interestingly enough here, you don't have a lot of crossover with SCHD, you've got you know Exxon, um, Altria, Texas Instruments, 3M, IBM, UPS, US Bank Corp, and then over here for the NASDAQ QYLD, a lot of different stocks here. So you might actually benefit from adding this here to increase your cash flow utilizing QYLD as well as SCHD. I'm certainly gonna look hard at potentially owning QYLD as a complement in my dividend portfolio to generate additional cash flow, especially since we've got that monthly cash flow calendar. As a quick reminder to you guys, this exact spreadsheet is available to you in the Patreon community. So if you are not currently a, a member of the community, then I, I think you might find a ton of value by joining. Of course, you don't have to, I love to deliver value value for free to you guys here on YouTube. But if you want to get more, if you want to see these spreadsheets, you know, fiddle with them yourself, um, make some adjustments, see what I own in my own portfolio, get access to the monthly dividend stock spreadsheet. Well, then by all means, you got to join the Patreon community. Join us over there. The link is in the description below. Make sure before you exit out of this video that you leave your two cents in the comments below. I want to know from you guys what your thoughts were on this, what I can do better, what you want to see more of, and what what questions or concerns or feedback you have on this video and what future videos you want to see. That's all I got for you guys. Thank you for being here and making it all the way to the end of the video. Have a great rest of your day and please continue to stay healthy both physically and financially. Have a good one.